Galaxy S24 Ultra, 30 minutes underwater, it survived. Let's start the disassembly of this device and see if we can find any water inside. The first thing to do is to hit the back glass of this S24 Ultra with a heat gun or a common hair dryer. With a suction cup, I started to pull on the back glass and as you can see, the back glass is held by double-sided tape and as always with Samsung, it is really easy to remove the back glass. Next, I carefully inserted a guitar pick between the back glass and the frame of this S24 Ultra and after that I moved the guitar pick right and left in order to detach the back glass from the frame of this S24 Ultra. The back glass on a Samsung device is held only with double sided tape. There are no metal pins on the back glass like we have seen it on the iPhone 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max so it should be pretty easy to remove the back glass of the Samsung device. I have already removed the back glass at the bottom and also at the right side of the S24 Ultra. I then inserted a tool in order to have a placeholder and after that I heated the other side of the S24 Ultra then grabbed my guitar pick and started to move the guitar pick on that area between the back glass and the frame of the device. As you can see the S24 Ultra is still working. I did have the notification saying that there is water on the charging port but currently there is no more notification about water in the charging port. The only thing left to do in order to completely remove the back glass is to hit the top of the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Here again I use the same guitar pick in order to separate the back glass from the frame of the device and after that I can open the device and separate the back glass from the frame of this S24 Ultra. Here is the inside of the new Galaxy S24 Ultra. I just need to remove the double sided tape that was still on the frame of the device. So how does the back cover of the Galaxy S24 Ultra compare to the S23 Ultra? You can see that the camera layout, the camera bezel is completely different and the back glass also is a little bit taller on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. Before going and removing all the components, I need to turn the device off. I see this medical info. This is new on the S24 Ultra. The camera at the bottom is the new 50 megapixel camera that is only on the Galaxy S24 Ultra and you still have the 200 megapixel main camera sensor. They still kept the 10 megapixel optical zoom and also the 12 megapixel ultra wide. On the S22 Ultra, I was able to replace only one camera. You need to disassemble the camera module in order to replace a single camera. So, so far I have not seen any water on the inside of this S24 Ultra. I just removed the front speaker and as you can see, the front speaker does have some water on it. Generally, the front speaker does not take much water and the rubber seal around the front speaker is what kept the water from going on the inside and reach the internals of the Galaxy S24 Ultra. The next part to remove is the wireless charging. I disconnected the flex cable and after that I pulled on it and it came out with the loudspeaker which is attached to the the wireless charging by double sided tip. Next the battery cable is the one to remove. Disconnect the battery cable from the motherboard and after that I can simply disconnect all the other flex cables that are connecting the motherboard to the charging module. All the flex cables have been disconnected. I'm going to remove the 5G antenna located on the left side of the S24 Ultra. After removing two screws I can pull on the 5G antenna and it's out. The battery of the Galaxy S24 Ultra is 5000 mAh and here we have the pull tabs that were introduced with the Galaxy S23 Ultra. The instruction is very simple, you simply need to pull on the blue pull tab that is attached to the battery and remove the battery. The instruction is simple but it doesn't make it easy to remove, you need to pull on the pull tab with a lot of force in order to have the battery to start moving. It is good that they have introduced pull tabs on the Galaxy S24 Ultra and S23 Ultra and most likely on other Samsung smartphones that are going to come but they need to redesign the pull tabs in order to make it a little bit more easier to pull and remove the battery. When I did the same thing on the Galaxy Z Fold 5, it was easy to remove because that battery is a lot smaller and doesn't have the same amount of double sided tape that is holding the battery on the inside of the device. While pulling, you may bend the battery of your Galaxy S24 Ultra slightly, but it should not harm your battery. And also with this device, there is the new design for the improved heat dissipation that you can see the gold stuff on the frame of this device. This is the new design for the vapor chamber. It is much larger than what was on the Galaxy S23 Ultra and this should improve the heat dissipation with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. 
I believe with the Galaxy S25 Ultra, it's gonna be a little bit more larger than this. And most likely one day, the area where the battery sits, that whole area might become the new vapor chamber in order to increase the heat dissipation of the Galaxy Ultra. After removing the screws at the bottom on the charging module, you can simply remove it. And it is basically the same thing as the Galaxy S23 Ultra and Galaxy S22 Ultra. So at the bottom of the device where the charging module sits, I cannot find any water on that area and also where the loudspeaker is. From outside, the design of the loudspeaker is different from the S23 Ultra, which is why there is no water found on the inside of this S24 Ultra. Now let's go and remove the motherboard. I disconnected all the other flex cables that were still connected to the motherboard. Those are the front facing camera, the 5G antenna at the right of the device and the S Pen flex cable. Now the motherboard of this S24 Ultra should be free to move. Directly on the back of some cameras, you have some heat dissipation tape that are going to dissipate the heat through the screen. And the layout of the motherboard is pretty much the same on the S23 Ultra. All these cameras are taking at least 50% of the space and the motherboard is the other 50%. Since there is no more space inside our smartphones, this is the only way they can provide really powerful motherboard, having the board sandwiched together in order to form a big powerful motherboard. I looked carefully at the motherboard, I didn't find any water near the motherboard or any trace of water on it. The second 5G antenna, to remove it, you simply need to pull and you're gonna have it out. Now the only thing left to remove is the front facing camera. For some reason, they decided to do it with some glue in order to have the front facing camera seated on the inside of this Galaxy S24 Ultra. You need to cut the glue on the right and left of the front facing camera and after that you simply pull and remove it. Here's the Galaxy S24 Ultra fully disassembled. Removing the screen is nearly impossible to have it done safely so I didn't do it. So the phone is fully assembled. I noticed that the Galaxy S24 Ultra takes more time in order to turn on. Maybe the Galaxy AI is thinking. The seconds that you have to press the power button is much longer than the S23 Ultra and previous S Ultra devices. Fully assembled and fully working, the Galaxy S24 Ultra is pretty much the same as Galaxy S23 Ultra. It is a device that is repair friendly and you just need the right part in order to fix your problem. Also, I was able to salvage the double-sided tape that was on the back of this Galaxy S24 Ultra. I heated the double-sided tape on the back of the back glass to make it a little bit soft. And after that, I simply placed the back glass on the back of this Galaxy S24 Ultra. Like any other Samsung device, if you have a failure in any part, if you replace that part, your device should be working like new. And it is the same for the screen, the motherboard, the charging module, the flex cables that can go bad and also any other stuff that you need to replace in order to have a fully functional Galaxy device. The only thing that I can add for Samsung is to have some kind of rubber on the inside where the S Pen goes. This will prevent what you just saw. The S Pen is full of water after my water resistance test on this Galaxy S24 Ultra. Subscribe, like and share for more video like this and I will see you next time.